how are we doing guys welcome back to the channel and this is the third and final part of our journey to soft cap and how i would do it at bdo in its current stage on console it isn't important to know i think i've mentioned this before but there's plenty of rows for soft cap there is no right or wrong way you should always play the game how you enjoy it but if people want to know from me what i would be doing this is the video for you and this is probably going to be the most relevant for the majority of the community as well because i'm going to be talking about grind spots like i said earlier on this is a grinding related video with some important life skills thrown in there I'll be throwing up video planner in a minute. Um, this gear is going to be very similar to what we have here is what we left off in the last video is what I'm currently wearing. Um, just an important note, red sand crystals and forest eye earrings are not available on the planner. So I'll be representing these with duo crescent rings instead of this and duo or tri which is earrings instead of the forest eye earring. So keep that in mind but i'll catch you guys in planner in a second before we start talking about where to grind and here we are on video planner so this is the close representation of what your gear should be looking like from where we left off you would have had 10 20 stacks 6 30 stacks and 250 stacks for competing valencia quest line on your main character and on your shy at this point which you would have used to get your grunnels all up to pry and you would have used it to, if you haven't bought your tri shuriken, you'd use it to get your shuriken to try. You would definitely be using it to get your green offhand to try. And again, the weapons vendor in Calfion is where you can buy the weapons to repair this item here. Um, and also you would have two red sand crystal rings now, and you'll be getting these to try as well, using 20 stacks at the highest, most probably to do try attempts and now we're gonna start doing a little bit of enhancing and before we do just the basic crystals i've kind of already gone over it these are just very cheap crystals that will give you a little bit of help in the early game two absorption crystals for the mana regen uh, sorry for the health regen on hit um, crit crystal for a little bit extra damage and experience crystals to help you level up whilst you are doing your grinding as well now in terms of what we're going to be doing with those 20 and 30 stacks is trying to get these granule pieces to try now if you haven't got enough 20 stacks because what i would be recommending is attempting duo on 20 stacks for your granules if you haven't got enough 20 stacks at this point i'd recommend leveling up two or two of your already created alt characters to 55 and running the quest line two more times i know this is going to take a decent chunk of time but it is also going to be important later on to have the Valencia quest line done an extra two times because stacks are very, very, very important in the early game because making them is a pain and it's going to cost you a bit too much in the silver department. So investing your time in getting those characters leveled up is going to help you reduce the cost and also increase your daily pay from family funds. So if you, if you do that two more times, you would easily have enough stacks to get all these armors to duo. So that would be your first step. And honestly, rouletting is not something I would recommend at all. I'm going to talk about etiquette of enhancing a bit later on and whether or not you even want to enhance. But this very early stage, it is actually worth just enhancing the granules to try yourself instead of buying them from the marketplace. It is 90% chance going to save you some silver because granule is very cheap and easy to get to try. Now, once you've got these to duo, you will then use one of your 30 stacks or a 31 stack so if you have the way you'd get 31 stacks if you fail duo um on your 20 stacks four times you should be rocking sorry i think it's a 32 stack not a 31 if you're rocking a 32 stack and that's where you would stop enhancing at that point and then with the 32 stack once you've got these three duos pop them in and get these to try and you'll repeat that process until all three of your granal armors are now try and you will stop around 50. Once you get to between 47 and 50 to 53, that's roughly where you're gonna, again, stop trying to get try on your granule because those stacks are gonna be very important later on. But now you've got some decent DP. You've got 242 DP, so we can start thinking about polys after we get a bit more AP. So we've got these three tri Grunel Armors and you've got the Valencia quest line completed a couple extra times. 
Now what we need to do is do the Camus Sylvia quest line. So for the Camus Sylvia quest line, if you open your quests over here, go to main and scroll down, you'll see level 58 where it's unlocked at. Now your main character is 100% going to be 58 at this point. If he isn't, it's really not going to take you a lot of grinding to get to 58. But here's the thing with the Kama quest line. We are going to want to do the Kama Sylvia quest line twice. And the reason being is you want this forest eye earring. So the first time you're going to do both parts one and two of the quest line. The second time you're only going to come down um, until you get this earring, which was the scouting support. So it's really not going to take that long in the quest line to get to this point. You can keep going if you want to um, get some extra upgrading enhancement stones here, but you probably won't need it because you should have a bunch of spares for co completing the Valencia part one quest line four times. You should have plenty enough to get that forest eye earring to try. But here's the thing, it's a 58 level requirement to unlock the quest line. So you've got two choices here. It's up to you. Personally, I'd level the Shy to 58 to do this because the more levels you get with the Shy, her passive increases her weight, which is going to help you with the life skilling in the future. But if you don't want to do that, it might be a bit faster just to get one of your level 55 alts from 55 to 58. Probably every single day, just spend, I think, one hour a day with the 200% frenzy buff, which you will find in your rewards. Uh, if you come down here, every single day this resets at midnight, um, depending on what time zone you're in. But roughly around midnight of the time zone that you're in, it's going to be resetting to give you the 200% combat EXP for 60 minutes. What I'd recommend is probably going to take you maybe three days, one hour a day on your level 55 to get that 55 to 58 pretty quickly and not be spending too much time on an alt character. So definitely get another character 58 because you really these two earrings are going to save you an incredible amount of silver and time in the long run again your short term is going to take a hit in the silver department but you're setting yourself up with more gear that will take you longer to get the silver for in the future anyway so now that you've done that let's get back to planner so now we're back at planner they actually have added these uh, items there. i don't know if i just missed it last time i was looking but they are actually in the game, so I apologize about that. So this is definitely your gear that you should be at now. You should upgrade these two earrings to try after doing Kama one and a quarter times, basically. And now we're going to have to think about making some silver because we need to make some gains. Your DP is pretty decent at this point. I wouldn't worry about DP too much. We want to raise our AP just enough to be able to get us into polys. Now, depending on your class is going to depend on whether or not you want to focus on your awakening or your pre-awakening AP first. Almost all the classes that I know of, awakening is just more effective, especially the lower levels, to get yourself um, the best clear speed possible. So most classes are going to probably going to upgrade their main hand first. But before we do that, let's talk about where you're going to be grinding for silver as of now. So with your current stats, I would recommend one of three zones. So you can go for Desert Naga Temple or Fogans, which roughly nets you the same silver per hour. Fogans will give you a bit more on the scroll department and Nagas will give you a bit more on the blackstone department. So if you're liking enhancing and you want to be enhancing in the future, which I'll talk about a little bit later on, Nagas is going to be where you want to be. However, if you can one shot, I'd recommend with your AP just coming up to Gaha's Bandits. If you can consistently one shot all the mobs that are here, you'd probably edge out just a little bit more in the money department at um, at Gahaz. However, it is important to note that it needs a decent amount of inventory slots here because you're going to get a lot of weapon drops like Rosar weapons and other bits and bobs, which is going to help you with the stones because a lot of the times you'll get enhanced, say a lot of the times, a decent number of times, some of the weapons are going to have some black stones in it 
anything from 1 to 15 blackstones, which you would most probably be extracting because you're going to be wanting to use these blackstones. Unless you want to buy your future items from the market, then you're going to be selling them. So if your inventory is holding you back a little bit, you do a lot better off coming back down and just staying in Nagas and Fogans. But that is up to you. The advantage of um, Gahas is it's pretty close to a merchant at Shaka 2. The same with Nagas. You're not too far away from the Sangrain Bazaar guy over here. If you do come to Fogans, you're pretty far away from a vendor to sell your items. So if you're having issues with weight and inventory, it will take longer to fill up your inventory, but you might have a weight issue if you would stay here too long. However, there is a trick with weight that I'll quickly show you here. In terms of an item, it doesn't matter if this was a hundred thousand planks that I had in my inventory, you can transfer that hundred thousand planks almost up to an infinite amount of weight onto your horse if you do a transfer all to your horse. At the same time, even if I'm over encumbered here and my horse has, let's say, 100,000 planks on it, I can still take all from my horse and go to like 5,000% weight. So what you would do is you'll have your camel probably in this situation. If you're going to Fogans, you'd have a camel with you. But you'll take your camel and you will take your trash loot that you're getting from Fogans, store it on your camel, continue grinding when you're almost over encumbered you'll come back to your camel take the trash loot off and then it will you know it will add up with all the trash loot in your inventory so if you had 10,000 on your camel 10,000 in your inventory now you'd have 20,000 trash loot in your inventory and then you transfer it all back into your camel like so and that way you can stay in that area for a decent period of time and grind away you won't get too many random drops of armor on you won't get any weapons drops so your inventory should be okay. You will, like I said, get a bunch of scrolls dropping, which would be these pillar face scrolls. Down here, and to save yourself inventory slots, you can combine five of them to make one ancient or uh, one pillar scroll that you can actually run to get memory fragments, blackstones, and seals. So that you can manage your inventory that way as well. So Fogans is still viable with limited weight and inventory, but like I said, there isn't a merchant nearby. I prefer Fogans grinding myself if I can't do Garhards. Garhards is my number one spot for grinding. Then it would be Fogans, then it would be Nagas, but they're all very similar and they fulfill different needs. If you really need the Blackstones, Nagas is the place to be. If you really need the scrolls Fergans is a place to be if you want a combination of the both then that's when you want to go to gahas and the gahas trash loot is worth roughly six to seven hundred more than the Fergans and nagas i think the Fergans and nagas trash loot is around one thousand and the gahas trash loot is around one point six thousand so you do usually get a little bit more money per hour at the Gahas area if you are interested in a bit more silver and in terms of skill points Gahas is slightly better than Fogans and Nagas for skill points from some of the guides I've watched on PC and Fogans is slightly better in experience but they're all very similar and there has been changes to mob densities so that might not be true in Xbox's current state but it would take way too much testing for me to confirm or deny that. So I'm just gonna say stick with what the PC has learned, but take it with a pinch of salt. They're all roughly the same though. It's very, very minuscule differences in skill points and experience in these areas that you're grinding. So you'll be grinding them for experience and silver as of now, because you are trying to get your character to 61 and you're trying to gear. Now, I'm going to talk to you guys about gearing because there is two ways which you can gear. One is enhancing yourself, and the second way is by buying from the central marketplace. If you are going to enhance gear yourself, that would require you to run Valencia Part 1 multiple times because you're going to need the stacks. Even now, with all the money I have, I still do Valencia runs. 
and the way i do it is i have one character which would be lord davos over here after i get him to 55 i do the valencia quest line i get my stacks i'll delete him which will take 24 hours for him to get deleted then i'll create another character and i don't know i call it lord fell stacks or davos or whatever i want just sometimes i literally just put like yfzg because i'm just in a rush and i'll level him up back up to 55 and do the quest line again the more ap you get the quicker you're going to get your character to level 55 as well so do keep that in mind the first couple of times you do it is going to take a bit longer so that is an extra step that you're going to have to do and enhancing sessions especially when you're getting to later on trying to get tech weapons and tech accessories they last a very long time for me to make a stack and go for tech accessories if everything goes to plan it's still like a three hour enhancing session so enhancing does take a considerable amount of time and there is a very large risk and reward myself i have saved over 10 billion silver enhancing easily i've had some very bad streaks to give you an example there was one point where i did 15 fails back to back on trying to get a tech accessory which cost me a lot more money than buying the tech accessory itself and that was mainly crescent rings i was going for i think i had like somewhere around four fails with the uh witches earrings and then i did two or three fails on tongrad earring pets and then a bunch of fails to tech on tech crescent rings and i just remember the number 15 it was 15 back-to-back -back fails and it was very infuriating because i spent a lot more than five billion trying to get myself a tech crescent ring but all in all, my RNG, as most people that know me understand, is very, very good. And I've come out ahead of the game. But I am a small percentage of the people that has had this much good luck in enhancing. Most of the time, it's going to cost you roughly the same, if not more. And when you're lucky, you save money. Now, I've managed to be lucky more often than not so like i said i've saved a lot of silver by enhancing my own boss gear to tet and my own accessories to try and tet myself buying at either well the accessories i'd buy at base usually when it comes to um weapons i don't buy base weapons i would buy them at pry because it usually costs you a lot more than 200 million you buy your weapon at 250 million, it's probably going to cost you more than 200 million to get it to pry because getting from plus 13 to plus 15 on boss weapons and armors is quite costly. So I would recommend buying at pry or even duo if the price difference isn't that much, which it isn't here, and then enhancing it yourself all the way to tet. You can also buy a try if you prefer, but you're probably better off getting at your dandies at prize and duos however like i said i am a small percentage of people that have had this has had this had this good luck in the game if you are not having good rng with the granul helmets and even like if you don't enjoy enhancing itself as a concept and you don't enjoy your enhancing sessions you've had a little taste of it getting and try granules then don't enhance sell all your um, scrolls sell all your black stones sell all your memory fragments you could also run your scrolls to get memory fragments and sell the memory fragments instead of selling the scrolls you get a little bit more money doing that because you also get some black stones and other items and then just buy straight from the central market it honestly doesn't take too long if you put a pre-order down for tet you would probably i'd imagine get it in less than a week but this is my experience on xbox eu could be different on na and things might change after the merger that's going to be out in a couple of days however up until now i've bought some tech weapons on the marketplace myself because i'm very tired of enhancing and i have usually i have not had to wait over a week after putting a pre-order down so those are the two different ways we can get our try to tech boss gear and our try to tech accessories now i'm going to tell you guys what you should be or what i would be prioritizing in terms of gains to be able to do this so the first thing i'd recommend is getting a tet dandy whether you buy it or you enhance it is up to you 
but like I said, your silver at the minute is going to be a daily hand-ins with cooking and it's going to be uh, grinding one of those three areas that we mentioned earlier. So you'd be picking yourself up a dandy and honestly, I'd recommend just straight up enhancing it to tets. You can stop at try if you want, if you're a bit scared to go for tets at the minute, you, you can stop at try, but I would definitely recommend just taking this to tet. It is 100% worth it. And to do that, again, 20 uh, for pry to duo, use between 20 and 30 stack. From duo to try, use between a 30 and a 50 stack. And from try to tet, use between a 50 and 110 stack. I would highly recommend stopping at 110 if you failed that many times. But again, if you really want your tet, go ahead and keep clicking it. I have been known to get quite a number of tets past the 110 stack because I've just really wanted it and I didn't have the patience but if you do have the patience and it is going to really help you out later on to save your bigger stacks for better things than a tet dandy but that's going to be your first upgrade and right around here when you got 211 a a awakening AP for pretty much any class you'll be able to one shot polys and I would recommend going to Polyforest and grinding Polyforest all the way up to level 61. You're going to take a little bit of hit in silver. The reason being, um, Kafras aren't out in the game yet. So the silver you get per trash item is going to be roughly the same as Gaha's, if not a little bit better than Gaha's, because the density in Polys is better than density in Gaha's. But you're not getting the scroll drops you're not getting as many black stones and you are getting some life spirit stones but they don't really sell on the central marketplace so you're not making as much money because of the scrolls and black stone discrepancy that you did get in the other grind zones but it's not too much difference but it is a small enough difference that i do have to mention it but Polly's is the most superior grind zone for lower APs to get yourself levels and skill points because skill points are really, really, really important. So I'd recommend staying in Polly's until you hit level 61. And then once you hit 61, you're going to get your first Kaposha item, which is a Kaposha ring. And now you'll be sitting at this AP. And by the time you're 61, you've probably got yourself a decent amount of silver and your next weapon. If your class does rely on your pre-awakening, I'd go for a Zarka here. If not, I would probably go for a Kutum. And again, I would get that Kutum to Tet and you would put an extra crystal in there for crit hit as well. And then again, if you've hit 61, you can stay in polys and keep grinding there until you get to around 235 AP or until you hit 62. 62 is a bit of a journey, but I use polys a lot. Polys, even though the silver is slightly less, I think the density in polys is great and just the experience and skill points alone is just unmatched in, compared to the other areas in my personal opinion. Now, after you've got this Kutum, the next thing you're going to be doing with your silver is now definitely going for the Zarka because you want that accuracy. Even if you're using uh, Dandy, you definitely want the accuracy and you've got a lot of skill points now. So you also want the flexibility for PvP to be able to use both skill sets. You're not ready for PvP because your DP is still very low and unless someone is roughly where you are, you're probably going to be losing a lot of your engagements. So I don't know what that says. That should be just a base composure ring there. However, now you're in a really good spot though. You've got a decent amount of DP because of your Kutum and you've hit your first significant AP bracket, which is 209. But what we are going to be aiming for is 235 AP. Now, we also going to need at least 280 to 290 DP. And this is where you can decide whether you want to go for your armors first or your accessories first. It honestly doesn't make too much difference which you get first because you're one-shotting the polys. 
so you shouldn't like even the more ap you get isn't going to grant you more money but the reason you want to get to the 235 bracket because that's when groups are going to accept you in to grind mirror mark which is going to be your first significant area for making silver and grinding so you're going to continue grinding and now what you're going to be looking at is getting yourself try accessories in the slots that don't um in basically all your slots until you get 235 ap so instead of biasing about your candles go for the vatara but for the extra 100 health that it does give well the extra 75 health that it does give you a try um that is definitely an option um however it is a little bit more expensive so you probably save yourself a bit of silver going for the bassy belt but it's up to you long term voltara belt is greater than bassy belt but right now the health isn't going to make too much of a difference for you now in terms of enhancing for accessories if that is what you choose to do instead of buying them what i would be recommending is using 18 to 20 stacks to go for your prior temps using 40 stacks to go for your duo temps and using 44 to 50 stacks to go for your try attempts now after you get your voltara belt i'd probably recommend getting yourself a crescent ring try and we're getting pretty close now but we, we still need a little bit more ap to take us over the edge so another option you have you can get the crescent ring first if you want or you can go for the necklace it's up to you it doesn't make too much difference at this point because gains they're gonna it's gonna feel nice in pvp but it's not gonna make much of a difference to your grinding at the minute so if you don't decide to go for the crescent ring instead you can go for a triceratops necklace and now we're very very close some people might accept you into mirror groups at this ap but you still don't have the dp now if you're at a good guild and they're willing to help you out you can switch to get your dp gains but if people it depends on your guild and depends on the people if people are a bit strict with the requirements you still want to keep focusing on ap and start replacing these with tech witches earrings however if you've got a good bunch of friends and some people that are willing to help you out we will we'll start focusing on our armors so the first thing we're going to replace is in my opinion the dim tree armor do i know it's cheaper to get um the red nose but dim tree is really just a lot better it's a lot better than red nose so i would really recommend taking the time to get the dim tree armor and for now for your armors i'd recommend just getting them try your weapons i definitely recommend getting tet but for the armors get them to try because you want to kind of get yourself a full boss set um it is kind of important i would recommend griffin's helmet over gaius it's pvp purposes the extra resistances that it gives you is just amazing 100 health is nice for pve but the pvp benefits and the extra damage reduction as well from griffin's helmet is just better but if you're forced to get a gaius it's not the end of the world it's still pretty good and then after we get the helmet i'd recommend getting the begs gloves and then depending on your class for your boots you can either go for muskins or ergons ergons for the majority of classes is better than muskins however classes for example ninja and kunu kunu who have evasion built into their kits muskins does benefit them a bit more especially late game but if you're something like a warrior or a zerka or even uh, i don't know there's, there's so many archers pretty much all the other classes urgons is better for you but they're pretty hard to get your hands on them if you can't get your hands on urgons then you are gonna have to settle for muskins instead and 285 dp is a little bit low but it is just enough to be able to and especially the group that has a witcher wizard in it um you will be able to survive mirror mark and grind mirror mark relatively efficiently so once you get to mirror mark it's really gonna feel a lot fast getting to 62 things are gonna speed up because the experience at mirror mark when you have the bell when you're fully experienced buff and um you pop your 200 frenzy is far superior than the experience at poly forest 
So you're going to find yourself getting to level 62 in not much time at all. Probably a couple of weeks um, spent there would get you to 62. So now you're going to be running a Kaposha earring. It's going to be a regular one, not a try, obviously. So now you're in a pretty decent spot. Um, I'd recommend just going for the Tet Witches earring and just probably buying it off the central market. Well, you can enhance it yourself as well. Um, if, you, if you like enhancing, you might save a little bit of silver, but they're only around one and a half bill, which isn't that much, especially when you're grinding Miramark. You'll be able to get that kind of silver in no time. But now you've got pretty decent AP. Some classes can even go into Archmans with this AP. For example, Wizard. If your class is able to enter Archmans at a low AP requirement, then your AP is there, but you do need to push that DP a little bit. And what I would recommend is getting your Begs Gloves to Tet, um, just because it gives you a little bit of extra accuracy as well as the DP. And then either your Dim Tree or Ergens. I think Ergens is probably a bit better, but if you're running Muskins, it would definitely be the Dim Tree, the one that you want to get to Tet after that. And at this point, if the AP for your class is good enough for Archmans, Archmans is definitely where you want to be. I've got a couple of guides for some of the classes, so check those out. The rotations are not going to be relevant anymore because of the mob changes, but the skill rotations are still going to be very relevant, and I'll go through the crystal setups that you need and the elixirs that you will need as well to be able to grind those spots efficiently. And once you do get into Archmans, things are really going to speed up the silver. You're going to start pumping out silver really, really, really quickly. And what I'd be recommending is just with that silver, getting the rest of your armors to Tet. And these experienced crystals, keep them in your helmets for now, especially at least till 62. And then we'll start talking about crystals in just a minute. But you would definitely want to get all your armors to Tet. This is pretty important. The extra evasion, the damage reduction, and the DP is going to help you out significantly. But right now, this is where you're looking decent for PvP. 235 AP with, will be able to, for most classes to kill up to soft cap DP. And now you've also got the DP to be able to SA trade as well. So start jumping in some RBF and having some fun. You can obviously jump in RBF earlier, but at this point, you're, you're really going to start feeling very strong and start to feel like you're reaching the potential of your class. Some classes don't reach their potential to much higher APs. Some classes reach their potential a lot earlier. A very easy example I can give you, Striker really becomes a powerhouse at 235, is very viable at 209, but his powerhouse is around the 235 bracket. Um, a Ninja at two, 220 to 235 is where it's like, it's kind of viable. It's not amazing, but it's decent. And then at 261 is when like this, the ninja becomes a powerhouse himself. So now again, you're grinding Archmans, you're making a bunch of money. You've, if you find yourself being able to grind there pretty efficiently without dying, you're going to start once you're thinking about best and slot crystals. Um, for now, I'd recommend sticking with core bonus crystals in your armor um, however in the future you're going to want to probably switch these out for evasion special attack evasion crystals but in terms of grinding core bonus crystals are going to help you a lot more than the evasions you can go for either gin or bond there's only a small difference between the two is two damage reduction uh, more for getting gin but 50 less hp and then 50 more hp for getting uh, core bonus, but two less damage reduction. It doesn't really matter which one you go for. But like I said, make sure before you do this that you are able to grind Archmans without dying. And then we're going to go into our Begs Gloves and we're going to get the Gin Vipers. These are really, really expensive. So again, you really want to, you don't want to be putting these in unless you're very comfortable with your grind and you're not dying to PvE. Um, in a replacement for the Gin Vipers, you can get one or bonds. They're definitely cheaper. 
and I think they're around 20 to 30 mil, so you can go for those instead. I'd recommend keeping the crit hit. If you want to venture more into PvP, uh, you can get the Voltara Spirit or the um, Awakened Spirit Crystal in its place. They give you 150 HP and 5 AP. You'll do less damage, but having an extra 300 HP for having two of these crystals will definitely make it feel a lot nicer for you in the PvP area. And for your boots, I'd get one of the Red Battlefield Adamantium. And depending on your class, if you need stamina, I'd go for one Black Magic Crystal Histria to get yourself some extra stamina, 150 stamina there. Um, I'd probably go for the Jin. I think the Jin version is the good one. I think, yeah, the Jin version, I'm pretty sure, is the one that gives you the most stamina. So you'd go for one of those. But if it's um, not that important for stamina, your class doesn't rely on stamina too much. I'd get the Black Magic Crystal Adamantium because you don't want to overstack knockdown. If you get two of the um, Adamantium Red Battlefield Crystals, you're going to overstack your resistances for knockdown you don't want to do that you definitely um want to focus some more of your resistances to the floatings instead that's going to help you a bit more and then for your crystals if you've hit 62 you can substitute these for some gin halfiers those are your best in slot crystals here and now you've got your crystals out the way crystals are quite expensive the half years aren't as important as the gins. I'd recommend definitely picking up the gins at least. The other crystals, these two crystals here um, are quite expensive. Or these four, these four gins, I guess, are quite expensive. So you can um, skip these if you want and just get some black magic vigor crystals for your armor and just keep your experience crystals if you don't want to spend the silver right now that is absolutely fine too and you can come back and get best in slot later on but the next upgrade that we're going to do is start going for tech accessories this is where things start getting scary in the upgrading department but i would 100 percent recommend going for tech on your crescent ring here first and in terms of enhancing do not take off something that you are wearing and risk enhancing it you want to get if you're enhancing it make yourself a new try and attempt tet on a 100 to 110 stack i've done all my enhances at 110 plus if you decide to do it a little bit lower i wouldn't recommend for gold accessories dropping below a 100 stack but i would definitely recommend enhancing to a tech crescent ring first and then it's up to you your second try the the try crescent ring you have you can either sell it or attempt a second tet if you'd like to however i would recommend going for your belt next getting that to tet here so now you will definitely sell your try belt to have some money in the bank and then you'd come back and get yourself another tech crescent ring Now, 245 AP is roughly where some classes start doing better in Histria, but this is strictly dependent on your class type. If your class is something like a Striker, you're going to be staying in Archmans. If it's something like a DK or a Sork, you're going to be going straight to Histria because you just do better in Histria than you do do in Archmans. And now in terms of PvP, if you guys really, really like PvPing, I'd recommend either just before you get your tech accessories or after you get your tech accessories, you can also pick yourself up a Nuva because Nuva is definitely superior to Kutum for PvP purposes. It just really pushes that AP to another level at the sacrifice of some DP. But if you're not too worried about um, PvP or your class just doesn't need that much AP, for example, your striker to kill people, You'd save yourself some money and make gains in other places just sticking to the Kudum. But if you like to dabble in RBF, maybe think about picking yourself up a Tet Nuva on the side as well. And now here, this is where you've really hit, like, it's been pretty difficult to get here. 
but you're going to hit a wall because your next upgrade in my opinion is going to be te ogring you don't I, I wouldn't go for the earrings just yet and te ogring is really really hard to get because ogre rings or tongrad ear uh, necklaces are just very expensive some people prefer to go for pen weapons at this point i'd i'd pref i went for ogre ring first before going for pen weapons it is up to you but if you decide to go for the ogre ring go for it you can also do tongrad necklace in its place but again tongrad necklaces are a bit more expensive so it is up to you what you want to try and do um and look at the central market as well i think maybe tet tongrad necklaces right now on xbox is slightly cheaper than ogre rings because less have been sold but i also know there's very few people with tet tongrad necklaces and i very much doubt they're going to be selling it so it might be a bit of a wait for you to get those items but they will hit the marketplace eventually but right now your gear is looking really 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 good this is pretty much end game right here you you can pretty much not have to worry about grinding if you don't want to you can kill anyone you want and you are breezing through pve at the minute because you're killing mobs so quickly that you shouldn't get in risk of dying but if you do want to push yourself you want to be that player that really has the best gear the next thing i'd recommend is probably pen weapons if you're running more than one class i'd go for um tech tongue rad earrings instead so for me i had a ninja and a um wizard so i would go if i'm running two classes for tet tongrad earrings and then i'd go for pen weapons now let's talk about pen pen weapons are incredibly hard to get minus that you have some godly rng it's very very difficult to hit pen in this game i'd highly 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 recommend saving yourself enough silver to be able to get a pre-order down on a pen weapon if, if even if you haven't got your tet tongue rad earrings yet if pen is what you want to go for next keep your kaposha keep your tet which is earring and save yourself enough silver to either get a pen dandy or a pen zarka depending on your class if you're a ninja i'd recommend getting the zarka if you're let's say like a dk or a wizard or a witch i'd recommend getting the dandy first but again, you at this point, you'll know if your class depends more on pre-awakening or awakening. So get enough silver to be able to put a pre-order down on the pen for your class. Then, after that, the silver you get, I'd recommend buying another Zarka or whatever it is. Let's just, I was going to say Zarka. Recommend buying another Zarka and going for pen. There is two different methods of doing this one is you can either buy one or multiple zarkas at base or pry upgrade them all to tet and roulette that on 100 plus stack to go for pen you can just do it with one like you can just buy one and just keep like when it goes to tet just do one pen attempt you can do multiple your your silver income is going to be flowing quite a lot grinding history at this point um, so your silver is not much of an issue and if you prefer having multiple attempts at pen get multiples if not just get one and the second method is if you don't like spending so much time enhancing instead of keep going for these tet zarkas or whatever it is you're trying to get pen you can literally just buy the tet off the central market attempt pen and then if it fails repair it sell it a try get enough money buy another tet attempt pen sell it a try so on so forth and you can keep cycling it that way until you get your pen i don't know which method is better sometimes it's going to be cheaper doing it the second way buying it and selling it other times you're going to one tap yourself all the way to tet and save a bunch of silver it's up to you which way you prefer if you want to spend less time enhancing use the second method if you enjoy the enhancing sessions use the first method but this is going to take you months, most likely. Unless you get really lucky, it's probably going to take you, if you're grinding really hard, at least a month to get your first pen. And that's with some good RNG as well. But eventually, you'll be looking like this for your Zarka and your Dandy. This is really endgame now, and you probably don't need this guide at this point. Even before this point, you're probably not going to need this guide. You know what you're going to want to do. Um, I'd recommend for your offhand, get a Nuva pen. Don't get the Kudum pen. Obviously, if you if a pen Kudum hits the market, buy it. 
even if you have to sell some accessories to accessories trust me on this i have sold so many to accessories to buy all my pens it is a lot better buying pens than it is making them 99.9 .9, even someone with my rng 99.99 percent .99 of the time buying your pens off the marketplace is going to save you a lot of money compared to making your own and then at this point i still wouldn't even go for pen kudum i'd start getting your armors pen so i'd recommend getting your armors to pen and i'd probably do begs first if you got urugons do urugons next if not get yourself a pen dim tree and then go for your pen muskins or pen urugons and then your last one is your helmet so like i said earlier before you start getting these pens you, you can go for either a pen grunnel some people say heave is better because it's got some extra hidden stats i've checked bdo um i've checked the stats on the bdo official page at level 20 or level 20 kafras at pen and it says they're exactly the same but i don't know we don't have kafras yet so honestly pen grunnel is the same at the minute as pen heave but if you do believe what they say on the internet then get yourself the pen heave first this is better for like let's say ninja classes that if you if you want to, you can go to evasion build in pretty much any class if you do want to go for evasion this would be better for you than um a pen boss a pen boss helmet however the advantage of obviously getting the pen griffin helmet is the extra ignore the extra, extra resistances that you get in my opinion griffin is still the best pen for the helmet a lot of people would disagree and say it's heave but i value these resistances that it gives quite a lot because you really want to be getting close as, as close to 60 percent as possible for all your resistances that the griffin is just going to help you do and honestly guys don't go for pen accessories especially right now these are not best in slot accessories there's better rings coming out the ogre ring is best in slot for now but there's rumors that there's going to be a new necklace that's going to be better than ogre ring coming out on pc soon i know we're not going to get that for a long time if you are going to go for a pen accessory tongrad's necklace slash ogre ring is the pen accessory that you should go for because these things are not best in slot and just the thought of going for pen accessories itself is absolutely insane you are crazy but if that's what you want to do that is what you will do so guys that is the end of this video i hope it's helped you i know it's been long but my biggest advice is if you are enhancing do not roulette whatever you do don't roulette the final tip if you see someone roulette and they get a pen get a pre-order down on that pen because if he's failed five six items before getting his pen dandy or his pen zaka he might end up quitting the game where he's like oh fuck i don't want to spend all this time grinding again to get all these things back i'll sell my pen and buy back all the tets that does happen more often than you think and that's one of the ways i've been able to snipe all my pens off the central market is by keeping an eye out for people that succeed sometimes even send them a message it's like hey you're going to be selling that if you are keep me in mind just little things like that will help you out that's the last of the tips that is how i would get to soft cap this is a lot longer than i expected i apologize but that is how i would gear those are the grind zones i would gear in if you guys have any other questions leave in the comment section down below I hope this has been helpful and I'll catch you guys in the next video.